This is Valley News Live at noon. We begin this afternoon with breaking news. Police in Mamindi are warning you about three armed and dangerous men involved in a shooting at an apartment complex. It happened early this morning at Pine Ridge Apartments on 30th Street Northwest. Police responded to the apartment at around 3.30 after several people called to report gunshots. Another caller told police he had been shot and was driving himself to the hospital. The man told police that three men surrounded his car when he pulled into the parking lot. That's when the gunman began firing into his windshield. The victim said the man continued shooting as he drove away. And police say the victim's car was riddled with bullet holes, broken windows, and blood in the driver's seat. The victim was not able to give a detailed description of the suspects. No word yet on how he's doing. Police suggest that residents in the area of the apartments be cautious and stay aware of their surroundings. Well, new developments in the case of a Fargo memory care worker accused of assaulting a patient. 59 year old Rachel Cooper pled not guilty in court this morning. She's charged with manslaughter and endangering an eligible adult in the death of a 78 year old Gary Pearson at Maple View Memory Care Center last month. Cooper told investigators that she was cleaning Pearson's bathroom when a struggle ensued. She said she pushed Pearson and then he tripped and fell. However, surveillance video showed Cooper shoved Pearson with both hands, sending him falling backwards into the hallway. He suffered a broken hip from the fall and his health deteriorated until he passed away days later. Medical examiners determined Pearson's death to be a homicide. Well, new for you at noon, a Moorhead man is recovering after a rollover accident in Clay County early this morning. It happened on Highway 32 south of Hawley, that's near Park Township, just before 6. 36-year-old Darren Trett was heading south when his car veered off the road, vaulted, and rolled into a ditch. The Minnesota State Patrol says he wasn't wearing a seatbelt at the time of the crash. Trett was taken to the hospital, but he's expected to be okay. Well, a man's behind bars at the police say he smashed into two cars during a police chase in Grand Forks. Officers tried pulling him over around 8.30 last night near 32nd Avenue South and Columbia Road, but he took off at a high rate of speed instead. Just after police ended the pursuit, driver 34-year-old Bruce Enstring of Grand Forks hit two vehicles and then he tried running away but was caught. He was booked for reckless driving, reckless endangerment, driving under suspension, and fleeing. No one was hurt in the crash. We'll see a first official first day of fall and it started off pretty chilly. It's never too chilly for pumpkin spice though. Let's check in with Summer Snowball for your weather report and Summer, I thought you'd like that. You know, I'm a big fan of the pumpkin spice, but I also like the apple ciders, the hot chocolates, just anything warm. But I think today might be a, an iced pumpkin spice kind of day. The sun is shining brightly looking at our home of economy, Grand Forks Sky Cam. A little bit of breeze, though, on that flag, but it's a southerly breeze helping to warm us up. And like you just mentioned, Brian, today is the first day of fall. The equinox is officially at 220 this afternoon, but meteorologists, climatologists and alike have been celebrating fall since September 1st, which is the start of climatological fall. Regardless, temperatures are in the 60s and some 70s at this hour. Fargo at 67 degrees, bright sunny sky, just a few clouds in Grand Forks at 70 degrees, 72 in Jamestown, 67 in Bemidji and Devils Lake, 66 in Fergus Falls at this hour. Looking at satellite and radar, things are mostly quiet, aside from a few high level passing clouds that don't show up too well on satellite. But the wind is starting to pick up again out of the south, so it's going to help warm us up, gusting to 23 miles per hour out of the southwest in Sisseton and gusting to 28 miles per hour right now in Jamestown. Your hourly planner today in Fargo will warm up a few more degrees, lots of sunshine, but in your seven day forecast, I'll let you know uh, the coolest day of the upcoming forecast may be more appropriate for that perfect fall sweater weather. That weather sounds nice. The ice pumpkin spice when it's breezy sounds more cold. So good though. <laughs> okay, you're right. It's <laughs> worth it. <laughs> Thanks, Summer. Well, today's the first day of fall and many of you are probably wondering how you can take care of your yards and gardens for the season. According to NDSU, fall is the perfect time to fertilize because it will repair any damage that happened to the lawn over the summer. This is also the perfect season to plant bulbs. Gardeners can delay planting until the ground freezes, but earlier planting leads to stronger roots and healthier future growth. Many delicious plants like turnips, kale, and Asian greens taste better when they ripen in fall. The cool nights of autumn increases the sweetness of these vegetables. 
Uh, well, the main thing is uh, to enjoy the fall and do the things in September that we should be doing in September here. And uh, don't uh, prematurely start preparing for winter because we, we do have some time for that yet. You can find more tips on our website, valleynewslive.com. Anti-abortion activists are gathering outside North Dakota's only abortion clinic every day for the next 40 days. The 40 Days of Li for Life campaign kicked off today in over 600 cities nationwide. The organization seeks to end abortion through prayer. The gatherings outside of the Red River Women's Clinic will last for 16 hours each day. Well, the effort to recall members of the Fargo School Board is getting national attention. Dr. Tracy Newman appeared on CNN's Anderson Cooper 360 last night to discuss the recall and why she says North Dakota schools can't let their guard down against the coronavirus. As physicians, you know, um, we always will follow the guidance um, of evidence-based recommendations and data and science and uh, not emotion. Um, it's expected that the Delta variant surge will peak in our area in the next two to three weeks. Um, I love my state. I want people to be healthy. I want us all to, to be happy. Um, unfortunately, right now, our vaccine rate in North Dakota is uh, very low. 50% of North Dakotans have received at least one shot of the COVID vaccine. Just 43% are fully vaccinated. There are currently over 1,000 active COVID cases in North Dakotans under the age of 19. Well, the CDC is investigating a salmonella outbreak in 25 states, including North Dakota and Minnesota. The CDC says 127 cases have been reported so far, but the true number of sick people could be much higher. Health officials say they've interviewing people about the foods they ate in the week prior to getting sick to try and figure out what's behind the outbreak. Well, heads up for anyone driving in downtown Fargo starting next Monday. The railroad crossing on Broadway between 4th and 6th Street North will be closed for repairs. Northbound traffic will be detoured along 4th Avenue North to 4th Street North. Southbound cars will take 6th Avenue to Robert Street. The repairs are expected to be finished by October 4th. Well, coming up at noon, a call to action to local government for kids that are concerned about climate change. But today, we'll talk about the first day of fall. Like Summer just mentioned, ice pumping spice could be in our mouths today. We'll have weather up next.